Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good time at Con42. Welcome to my session on reinventing speech to text transcriptions. I'm Pratim Bosle, developer advocate at Serial TV. In today's talk, we will be covering a couple of areas, starting with the costs associated around speech to text transcription APIs, an introduction to Whisper and Whisper CPP. We'll also understand Go bindings and how they relate to our discussion. We're going to see some use cases of transcription services, and we'll end the session with a live demo to show Whisper CPP in action. So without further ado, let's dive in. What is speech-to-text transcription? Speech-to-text transcription is nothing but converting spoken language into written text. All your voice assistants use speech-to-text, be it Siri, Alexa, or even OK Google. I started exploring speech-to-text APIs when I wanted to have subtitles for my meetings, but most of the applications that I tried were paid. And then the developer instinct kicked in me and I thought of building one for myself. I explored the solutions that were given by Google and Amazon, but they were super, super expensive. And that's when I decided to go ahead with an open source solution. One of the reasons that these apps were getting too expensive after a certain point was their pricing point. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money. That's where OpenAI's Whisper came into picture. But before we go ahead and understand what Whisper is, let's take a look at the pricing table of both Google's API and Amazon's speech-to-text API's cost. But to give you a calculation of how much it would cost me to use Google's speech-to-text API, the screenshot on the screen should speak for itself. If you cross the given threshold, you might have to shell out at least $1,000 every month on the API subscription. This was definitely not helping my case and I decided to explore Whisper. So let's see what Whisper is and what Whisper CPP is. Whisper is an open source automatic recognition system developed by OpenAI. It has been trained on a vast amount of multilingual and multitask supervised data collected from the web. It is one of the most underrated models of OpenAI. Companies like Snap Inc., the creator of Snapchat, Shopify, and a lot of other companies are already using the Whisper API. You can see the architecture of the Whisper model on the screen. The Whisper architecture is basically a method used to convert spoken language into written text. It works in a step-by-step -step manner using a specific type of computer model called a transformer. The speech is divided into small parts, each 30 seconds long, and then changed into a format that can be understood by the model. This format represents the speech in a visual way, showing its features and patterns. The model also has two parts to it, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder processes the speech and decoder converts it into the text. This model can do more than just transcribing the speech to text. It can also identify the language being spoken, provide information about when certain phrases are spoken, transcribe speech in multiple languages, and even translate speech into English. This is done using a special symbols that helps the model understand what tasks to perform. And Here's where the Whisper CPP comes in picture. Well, Whisper CPP is nothing but a lightweight implementation of Whisper. It is a C++ implementation of Whisper model, which allows for faster execution and lower resource consumptions compared to other implementations. Now, now you must be thinking, where is Go in this? Where does the part come? Where does Go come into picture? Well, let's talk about Go bindings. In order to use whisper.cpp in your Golang projects, we will be using Go bindings that are provided by the project. Before we go ahead and understand how Go bindings are being used, let's, let's understand what Go bindings are. Well, Go bindings are a way to call functions or use data structures from other programming languages within your Go code. This is useful when you want to leverage existing libraries or APIs written in another language while still writing your main application in Go. The process usually involves a bridge 
between the Go code and the code in the target language using the foreign function interface FFI of the target language. This also makes sure that there is seamless integration of whisper.cpp into your Golang application. This, I built a basic CLI application which would convert the audio from a YouTube video into text. Let me take you through the code so that you get a better understanding of how whisper.cpp works. We will then head over to the demo. I will be explaining the major function from the code, which is the transcribe function. The transcribe function that you see on the screen is responsible for initializing the transcription model using whisper.new. We are passing it the path of our audio file as well as of the model. Now this is the whisper model from OpenAI. We go ahead and create a new context for our model. For those who are not familiar with what a context is, let me explain it to you. In context of the Whisper architecture, context usually refers to the surrounding information or the environment that helps the model better understand the speech it is processing. When transcribing speech, having a broader context allows the model to more accurately recognize and interpret the words and phrases being spoken. This is because the meaning and pronunciation of words can be influenced by the words that come before and after them. For example, when transcribing a conversation, knowing the topic being discussed or having the access to previous sentences can help the model better predict the words and phrases likely to be spoken next. This additional information can lead to improved transcription accuracy and overall performance. The next step in building our application is to decode the WAV file. A WAV file, a WAV file, is the audio format accepted by Whisper. We decode it into a slice variable called data. But we first need to check if the sample rate of the audio and the number of channels are the same as accepted by Whisper. If not, we will be returning an error. We then pass the data variable to context.process, which would do the actual transcription. The final step of this is to print the results. For this demo, I have also dockerized the de dependencies to avoid cross-platform issues. You can see the commands to compile whisper.cpp on the screen. Now, before we dive into the demo, let's talk about use cases. Transcription services are used in a plethora of use cases like meetings, interviews, podcasts, customer support interactions, voice assistance, real-time closed captioning, and many more. The versatility and efficiency of Whisper makes it a valuable tool for developers working on a variety of projects. Let's now let's move ahead to our demo and check out how you can build your own application using whisper.cpp. Let me show you the 30 second video that we're going to transcribe. I found it on YouTube and it's a quick 30 second video and we're going to check it out before we see its transcription. So you're running a little late today and you haven't had your fresh cup of coffee yet. No matter the weather or traffic, we deliver fresh coffee and bagels. The Java Cafe. Yep, that was it. And now let's get back. Okay, let's go ahead and build our Docker image first. This will take a little bit of time. 2,000 years later. So finally, 10,000 years later, the Docker image is finally built. We are now going to run the container. I've added a short YouTube link, which is around 30 seconds. A longer YouTube video link would have taken me a long, long time. So I'm adding a shorter video. It has now started the transcription. This will take some time and it can it can la the larger the video the more time the transcription will take the transcription is finally done and now you can see the result 
you can see exactly all the words that were mentioned in the video as a part of your transcription. Uh, you can see it says, so you're running a little late today and you haven't had your fresh cup of coffee yet. No matter the weather or traffic, we deliver fresh coffee and bagels. And there was music. Then it also says the Java Cafe. Yeah, and that was our 32nd video, which has been completely transcribed. And with that, we come to an end of this session. Thank you so much for going through my session and giving me this opportunity. If you have any questions regarding this session, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Bhosle Pratim. Hope you have a great day and hope you like the rest of the conference. Thank you.